What's up guys? Today I want to talk about the Anastasia Beverly Hills and Jackie Aina palette. Specifically, it's going to be a quick review, some swatches, but the bulk of this is going to be makeup tutorials showing you the looks that I've created using it. I was kind of late to this game and it feels like I'm really late to getting to a review. I don't, there are so many people who have amazing reviews and comparisons out there, so don't feel like I could add anything to that conversation. I'll link a few of those that I have seen down in the uh, description box below if you want to go check them out, but that's why I'm going to be pretty brief with my thoughts on it. I mean, long story short, I like it. And focus instead on the tutorials in case you've decided to pick this up or you've pulled similar shadows from your makeup collection together because, like me, you saw this and were like, <laughs> yes, please. Um, and you're just looking for some inspiration into how to use them together. That's what this video is going to be about. Let's go ahead and dive in. So when it came to buying this palette, it was kind of a one-two punch for me. I actually saw it as I was checking out at Ulta and I hadn't seen it in person. I don't know how I'd missed it merchandise throughout the store, but I saw the packaging and that's when I was like, excuse me, this for whatever reason, I feel like the pictures and videos didn't really do this exterior. In fact, this might not even be doing it justice right now, but it's this incredible iridescent snake skin that shifts between lavender, light purple, green, blue, all, all of the colors here. Super beautiful. And then you open it up and you see that the shadows inside are just as incredible if you if these are the shades that you like right it's a mixture of pinks purples but also warm tones bronzes and coppers and then of course a mixture of textures mattes shimmers duochromes shimmery toppers that can be built to high shine metals and you know the textures alone are a recipe to get my dollars but then to have them all in this packaging and i was sold. So that's the palette in a nutshell. You get three six mattes, six not mattes, I guess. They're really a broad range of, like I mentioned before, shimmers, duochromes, chunkier shimmers slash glitters that can really be built and layered to create glittery borderline metallic looks. But the textures really are balanced here throughout. Like you have everything from your crease and transition shades for my skin tone that's really ginger and supreme, but a good balance of textures throughout the whole palette and a nice balance of tones across a spectrum of light to deep shades. It doesn't feel heavy on either end. You have a good number of different shades to add more depth and drama to your look. You have a good number of light shades to highlight when you need it. And then you have those really fun, colorful shades that are kind of in between. They're really just there to add a pop, whether it's of color or it's of your classic like metallic sort of shimmery shades. Also, side note, you get the same brush that you do with, I'm pretty sure, all of the Anastasia palettes. It's this dual ended on one end you have kind of a fluffy but still flat shader brush really great for building a good amount of product like really packing on product and pigment and on the other hand you have a blender where it's this fluffy domed sort of shape I love this for blending out the crease or if you just want to kind of blend out super quickly across the lid I'll use this too I really love these brushes it feels like a bonus in the palette and like it might be treated as an afterthought but I actually always keep these brushes with my palette because these when you when I really reduce it down to what I need to create the looks I like to create, it's just these two. And so all the looks that you see with the exception of the one that I'm wearing today, because I wanted to try another brush out, they were all created using this brush. So I think they actually come in pretty handy and it's nice that they, um, you know, have a slot in here in the actual palette. But back to the palette, I think the only other thing I want to touch on is the quality. I think they're pretty consistent with all of Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes in the past. I really love the quality here. All of these shades are very pigmented and yet very shearable. I was a little concerned when I first got this that ginger would be too deep or too dramatic on my skin tone for a crease shade, but I really quickly found out just how shearable these were, as well as buildable. I mean, all of these you can get to full pigmentation that you see here in the pan, but I just know this because ginger's my crease shade in particular, that just with a super light hand, it really just creates a nice subtle crease shade, or you can build it up to be something a little bit more dramatic. So bottom line, these are buildable and layerable across the board, and those are kind of my thoughts on this palette. I have nothing bad to say about it. Really love the combination of shades and textures, and I haven't put it down since I started using it. So let's go ahead and jump into the tutorials. I actually have five looks that I've created and like walk through the steps, two of which are pictures only though, because I wasn't able to like film them. So I don't actually have video of them, but I'll walk you through the looks that I do have video of. And then if you want to see those picture looks, I'll flash them up here on the screen. In case you're curious, you can head to my website or on Pinterest if you want to save them 
them for later. But hopefully, if you were looking for some inspiration, one of these five looks will do it for you. So first, let's talk about the look that I'm wearing today. The other two I've actually posted on Instagram. I know a lot of you guys don't have that though, so that's why I'm gonna walk you through them here today. But if you do, and you want a sneak peek of these, or you just wanna see some things that I don't post on YouTube because they're just too short, they're too fast, they really don't need much of an explanation, definitely go follow me there because I post tutorials I'm trying to get better, but kind of frequently. <laughs> so today's look, I first used Supreme in my crease. I went in with the brush that comes in this palette, the fluffy blending end, and I dipped it a little bit into Supreme and just started blending right in the narrowest part of my crease. And then I didn't pick up any more product. These are so, so pigmented that if I want a concentrated piece of color in the crease, I'll stick right there. Otherwise, I'll really start fanning and working it outside of the crease to get the blend that I like, that I prefer to have up into my brow bone and that's literally I'm not really wearing a brow bone highlight here today because I didn't want anything shimmery on my brow bone so instead all you see here is just the natural gradient that blending the shade supreme created up to up from my crease to my brow then on my lid I went in with credit what I find I'm doing a lot with this palette is taking the deeper shades and using them as the base across my lids so that I can then play with the lighter shimmery shiftier shades to really see how they transform over those deeper shades in this palette. So that's what I did. I took the other shade of the brush that comes in this so I could really pack on that pigment, pat it on, and then flip the brush over, start blending it out with the other end. I did notice that that created more of a softer purple shade in my crease, although I will say credit in general when I compared it to a lot of other deep deep browns in my collection naturally leans a little bit more purple and I think it's that's why it's so complementary to the pinks and purples in this palette. So yeah, blended that all over my lid up into my crease then I went in with some glitter using this new Real Techniques brush. It's from one of their new limited edition collections I picked up from Ulta, also from Ulta. It's the 05. It's just like a stiff bristled flat brush that I really like for packing on more textured shadows. I spritzed it with my Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water just to give it a little bit of something for the pigment to cling to. And I went in with the shade Duolas and I patted that all over my lid, making it more intense in my inner corner and then and really letting it the intensity kind of fade out towards my outer corner and then just to add a little pop of something in the center of the lid I went in with the shade Zam same brush and I just pat that in the center of my lid as well as took a little bit of that on the end of my brush and used it to highlight the lower lash line in my inner corner and brought it out towards the center of my lower lash line as well applied a few coats of mascara and that is how you get the look that I'm wearing today the next look I re it's so simple but I really love it because it ended up looking more striking than I kind of expected. So I started with ginger this time in the crease, and I hope you can really see here how it's shearable, like I mentioned before. Again, taking the brush that comes with this palette, the fluffy blending side, blended that up to my crease, kind of intensifying it in the outer portion of my crease. And then to highlight my inner corner, I went in with Soleil, which I have to say is a lot more shimmery when you actually apply it to your inner corner. I constantly feel like my inner corner is broken and it doesn't really give that ultra blinding highlight that everybody else's does. But Soleil is one of those shades where when I put it on, I can actually see a difference and it looks like I just a light beam is shining out of my inner corner. And that's what I'm after, honestly. So highlight my inner corner with that. And then this is my favorite part. This is what makes the look. I went in with my Isom Pro Mixing Medium and I wet a, an angled liner brush with it. And I just took a little bit of that in the shade Wigglies to create a hot, fiery, copper, red copper liner. Now this particular mixing medium does give you a little bit of hard pan. So you can see in the close up that I really kept the mixing medium over here to the far right side. That's just forever where, I'll, where I will put my mixing medium when I wanna use this as a liner or wet in any kind of way. But holy pigmentation, does that create a super gorgeous liner. Again, applied mascara, and that's literally all I did to create that look. Now moving on to the last look, once again, I started this look off with ginger. This does tend to be my go-to crease shade, and I took the same side of the brush that comes with this palette, really blended it. This time I really intensified it with this look because I knew I wanted something super intense and dramatic. So you can see I really layered ginger up in my crease and then diffused it pretty heavily up towards my brow bone. Next, I went in with Big Wig using the flat shader side or the brush that comes with 
the palette and I wasn't really sure where I was going with this look when I started it. I thought maybe I would first deepen up my outer corner and then slowly big wig started to creep across my lid and I ended up with this gorgeous plum smoky eye. So blend that all over your lid and then I went in with credit to deepen up my outer corner a little bit more just to add some contrast before then going in with my favorite shade in this palette. You know I love a good duochrome. The shade sponsored is that classic green red brown shift that transforms any shade you put it over and I feel like it especially pops over the dark browns and purples in this palette. Like that green really comes forward with those. So I pat that using my finger actually all over my lid and then last went in with that shade Soleil to highlight my inner corner. And those are the three looks that I filmed. Remember I also have those two kind of pictorials that I created. One is a little bit more of a berry leading look in case you wanted to see more of those shades used. The other one is actually more of a neutral smoky eye in case you want to see something less colorful. But I really just wanted to show how I think this palette can kind of do it all, which is why I love it so, so much. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye, guys.